There was a story of two prisoners who were caught for a crime and it was a time of war, it was a time of distress. These two prisoners were sentenced to 10 years of torture in a dungeon. Ikukulong mo sila ng sampung taon. When they were about to enter the dungeon for a 10-year sentence, torture and punishment and suffering in this cold, isolated place amidst this war, one of the prisoners received a news that his family, wife and children, died, was killed. They were murdered. So he was about to enter 10 years of torture, but his family, he got this bad and sad, tragic news. Patay ang kanyang buong pamilya. The other prisoner also received a news, but it was good. His family is alive. Wife and children are alive and waiting for him to come out after 10 years. Can you imagine? Which prisoner do you think will survive, will thrive in this torturous, dark, difficult experience in the dungeon? Sino kaya ang tatagal sa kanila? Well, the prisoner who is waiting for the day when he will meet his wife and children again. He survived, endured, enjoyed the 10 years of suffering and torture. He was able to look forward for the day. Makikita ko rin ang asawa at anak ko. But the prisoner who received the sad and tragic news, wala na ang asawa at anak mo, walang nagaantay sa'yo pagkatapos ng kulong na ito. He died after two or three years in prison. Brothers and sisters, something beautiful and powerful happens when we have hope. Amen? Amen. Kapag ka meron daw ho tayong pinangahawakang bukas, when the future is more beautiful and more powerful and better than what we are going through in the present, kakayanin mo daw ang lahat ng pagsubok. Kakayanin daw natin lahat ng dilim at gulo. We can endure pain and suffering and evil and the injustice we go through in the present time because the future is brighter. Future is good. And that is what the book of Revelation is all about. Isn't that amazing? That God is showing us a glimpse of what will happen in the future. Na pinapakita ng Diyos sa atin, pasilip nga! Lord, ang hirap-hirap na, ha? hindi ko na kaya. But God gives us a glimpse. Ah, that something is worth waiting for. That someday, it will be more beautiful and there will be justice. God will correct all the wrong. And it is worth the wait. It is worth the enduring. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Panginoong Diyos, salamat po sa araw na ito, sa aming pakikinig sa iyong mga salita. Lord, we thank you because your word is true, your word is powerful to lift us from our discouragement and give us hope and courage and confidence to live for you, to strive and endure whatever life throws at us. Kaya nga, Panginoon, mangusap ka po sa bawat isa sa amin sa umagang ito Lord, in whatever situation we are in, I pray for every family, every marriage, every person, every work, every school represented today. Speak to us, Lord. Give us hope. Give us courage. And let your word be a source of life today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Ito po ang ginagawa sa atin ng Book of Revelations. Yes, the Book of Revelations is filled with a lot of Gloomy and dark and scary warnings and predictions about the future. But on top of those, the book of Revelations is very beautiful because it invites us to understand that the final word is not death, that the final word is not troubles and tribulations, that the final word in our journey is God's word, it's God's story, it's God's program. Kung maalala niyo po ang Bible storyline ng Bible, no? It's, it began with creation, beautiful, perfect, the Garden of Eden. And then the human beings, the first humans sinned and fell. 
So we entered a broken, dysfunctional, fallen world, sinful world. Yun ho ang quaint ng salita ng the whole Bible storyline is the story of creation, fall, and the coming of the Savior, the coming of the Messiah. Ah, redemption. But it doesn't end there. The Messiah, the Savior, will come again as King, as Restorer. And so the book of Revelation points us to that final chapter in our journey, to that final chapter in God's program. Nasa bandang huli, panalo ang Diyos. Nasa bandang huli, magwawagi ang kabutihan. Good, will triumph evil. And that is called the restoration. Ang ganda, no? Yan ho ang kasaysayan at ang kwento ng Book of Revelations. Alam niyo ba that the context of the Book of Revelations is really about Jesus Christ? Yes, the Book of Revelations is apocalyptic, it's prophetic, but it's also epistolary. It encourages the churches to hang on. It encourages and gives hope to the believers na, hey, it is worth dying for. It is worth suffering for. One day, God will restore all things. So we were kicked out of the garden because of the sin. So now we are in a journey. We are like pilgrims. Tayo daw ay para mga dayuan sa mundong ito, naglalakbay. From the garden, now we long and we groan and we look forward to the new city. And that is the book of Revelations. It's about the person of Jesus Christ. He's the king. He's come, the coming Messiah. He is the, it's also about the power of Jesus Christ to defeat all evil. But it's the program of Jesus Christ. His 1,000 years reign. His, the rapture of the church. The judgment seat. The new heaven and the new earth. Kung magamapansin natin, Genesis talks about paradise lost. But Revelation talks about paradise regained. Ang galing! And so the whole Bible story is really about God's restoring and renewing and bringing back whatever we have lost. Sa buhay natin, dahil sa kasalanan, dahil sa mundong ito, meron tayong mga pinagdadaanan. But God is giving us a picture of the future. Ang lakas talaga ng epekto ano, sa ating buhay kapag alam natin yung ending, kapag alam mo na kung sinong champion sa dulo, hindi ka nakakabaka ba, hindi ka natakot, pero masarap pa rin panoorin yung boxing, kahit alam mo panalo na sa dulo, si Pacquiao. Ang sarap pa rin panoorin yung replay ng PBA, kahit alam mo sa bandang huli, Hinebra na panalo, kasi napanood mo na. God is giving us the book of Revelations as a glimpse of the ending. Lord, alam ko na ending, panalo ka. Lord, kalam ko na ending. Kahit ang gulo, ang hirap-hirap ng pinagdadaanan ko. Alam ko, sa bandang huli, sa dulo, panalo kami ng mga tagasunod ni Jesus. Amen? Amen. Hello? Palapakan nga natin ng Panginoon. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. So today, we will be entering a chapter in the book of Revelations that talks about the new heaven and the new earth. This is the ending of the story. We need to understand that our present reality in this life is shaped by our hope in the future, new world, where we will be accepted in God's city, where we will, we will, receive, we will be received into God's covenant, we will be embraced with God's compassion, we will be assured of God's complete restoration, and we will be filled with God's delight as children. We will find satisfaction finally in life. Because of God's restoration. Mga pansin nyo that the original readers of the book of Revelation, the first ones where the Apostle John wrote this prophecy about, this prophecy to, yung mga audience niya, sila yung mga tinotorture. It was under the Roman Empire when the original readers and the original audience of the Apostle John, when he wrote this book of Revelation, they were suffering under the persecution of the Roman Empire. This is a time when Christians are fed to the lions, when Christians are burnt alive, and their bodies, their burning bodies, serve as street lights to light the city of Rome. Grabe ho talaga pinagdadaanan nila. Pinapakain sa leon, sinusunog, tinotorture, binubugbog, pinapatay. They were beaten, they were tortured, they were martyred. 
And so the Apostle John received this revelation, these visions from God, and wrote this to the suffering, persecuted Christians in Rome. And they received a vision, a hope, na ito palang mga pinaghihirapan natin, mga iniiyak natin, isang araw, matatapos din. May ginagawa ang Diyos. So today, we'll be reflecting at least on at least five important truths about the new heaven and the new earth in Revelations chapter 21. In the new future world. So the question today is, how can we hope how can the hope of a future reality about the new heaven and the new earth encourage believers amidst our present suffering, pain, difficulties, and injustice? Oo nga, no? Ano bang kinalaman itong bukas, napakagandang bukas, sa ating pinagdadaanan sa kasalukuyan? Ah! So we'll talk about five important truths. The first, in the future world, we will be accepted to dwell in God's city. Ganda! We will, be receiving, we will be received into God's covenant. We will be embraced with God's compassion. We will be assured of God's complete restoration. Siguro ba? Totoo ba yan? We will be satisfied as God's children. Let's begin with the first truth found in the Revelations 21. First, in the future world, we will be accepted to dwell in God's city. Yun ho, no? So, this is both personal and both about our world. Personally, individually, as a believer in Jesus Christ, we were promised that there will be a transformation of our bodies. This is called the resurrection. If Jesus rose from the dead, all of us will be resurrected again one day. The Apostle Paul gives this imagery, for example, in, in 2 Corinthians, when he mentions about, we have tents. Ang katawan daw natin, ang katawang lupa ay parang mga tolda. Have you tried living in tents? Tents are temporary shelters. When storms come, tents are not stable. That's our present bodies. These are tents. The Apostle Paul says, ito ay mga tolda lang. Pag nagkasakit yan, pag binagyo yan, madaling mamatay, madaling magkasakit, madaling mapagod. Vulnerable. The Apostle Paul not only mentioned our bodies like tents, he says, these are jars of clay, mga palayok, marurupok. Konting virus, kakasakit ka. Konting cancer cell, ICU ka. Konting bugbog, Orthopedic ka. Konting sakit. Hospital ka. Yeah, no? we are tense. Ah! But Revelations gives us a promised future. The tents will be replaced. Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians, by buildings made not by human hands. Ah! So you're longing for a heavenly body. No more sickness, no more pain, no more cancer, no more, no more old age. Ah. But this is not just about our bodies. This is also about our world. This world is described as a fallen world, a broken world, dirty, dark. This is the world where there are now 100, more than 100 genders to choose from. This is now the world where it rejects and hates God. This world is where we suffer and bashed Cancelled because of our faith. Yan, ito yung mundo natin. Punong-punong ng pandemia, punong-punong ng cancer, punong-punong ng pagdurusa, pandaraya. Full of injustice and corruption. But one day, so we were out of the garden, but we're not longing for the garden anymore. We're longing for a city. Yan, so that's, that's the first passage, no? Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. Ang ganda, no? John, the Apostle John, now sees this scene, this, this video clip. 
this Blu-ray DVD vision that the old earth and the old heavens are passing away. Lumilipas na ang, ang lumang mundo. Stars, the planets, the moon, the sun, they will be replaced. The heavens, they will be replaced. The cosmos, the galaxies, they will be replaced. Those are the heavens up in the sky. And the earth, the ground, the seas, the, the mountains, civilizations, they will be replaced with a new heaven and a new earth. This happens after the millennium, a thousand years reign, and after the great white throne judgment. The reason why God will destroy the present heaven and, and the present earth is that because He originally made them perfect for human beings. However, sin has destroyed and corrupted this, this, this creation. So now, in the final stage of the story, God will restore His original creation by creating a new heaven and a new earth. And that is the groaning in our hearts. Di ba? Pag nakakita ka ng gulo, nakakita ka ng padaraya, pag mayroong inaapi, pag may naghihirat, nagugutom sa kalye, something in us groans. When we see poverty and suffering, when we see injustice, something in us is groaning. Lord, tama na! Pwede ba? Dumating ka na. Yeah. Come, Lord. And destroy all these evil people and these wicked people and this injustice in our world. So, we were groaning. We were made for this city. We were made for the new heaven and the new... We were, we were destined for that. And that's why there is groaning. There is parang aligaga. Hindi mapakali ang ating mga puso at mga kaluluwa kasi parang may kulang sa buhay natin. That's why no matter how much money you make, Something is groaning. Nagahanap tayo ng mas mabigat at matindi at mas maganda ng higit sa pera, ng higit sa sex, ng higit sa relasyon, ng higit sa trophy, ng higit sa bayat at kotse. That's why the Apostle Peter says, we are pilgrims on a journey. We are strangers. We are aliens. Kung masaya ka sa mundong ito, something's wrong with your spirituality. Kung ayaw mo nang umalis sa bahay mo, masaya ka na sa kotse mo, masaya ka na sa negosyo mo, masaya ka na sa bank account mo, eto na, I made it. Something's wrong. We forget that all of this will burn. And all of this will one day be gone. Kung masaya ka sa itsura mo, dahil mo ng mga surgery and cosmetic trappings in your life, one day our health will fade, our beauty will fade. Ikaw ang pinakasikat ngayon, ikaw ang pinakagwapo, ikaw ang pinakamaganda, ikaw ang pinakamayaman, ikaw ang pinakamalakas, ikaw ang pinakamatalino, eh di wow, ikaw na. Pero lahat, yan mawawala, yun, that's the, the book of Revelations. The old will, <laughs> grabe. And so our contentment, our true pleasure and true delight is not in the things in this world, but it's in, it's, it's in the beyond the world. Reality. Lord, hindi pala ito ang tahanan ko. This is, my, this is not my true home. This is not my true citizenship. We, we, have a, we have a different passport. So, citizens of this world, they're happy here. They are content here. Tanggalan mo ng bahay, magwawala. Ibaksak mo negosyo, magpapakamatay. Hiwalayan mo, mag, mag, magugulo ang buhay. Tanggalin mo yung pera niya. Depressed na. Believers in Jesus Christ, we have a different, we, be, we have a different citizenship. Paksa kang negosyo, nagpe-pray. Kakagulo sa pamilya. And baon sa utang. Ang tamis ng ngiti. Kasi kinakanta natin, with Christ in my vessel, I can smile at the storm. Have you ever tried smiling at the storm? Ngitian mo nga ang ondoy. Dami na mataya. We smile. We have confidence. We have courage because we have hope. Tayo yung 10 years tinotorture pero may inaasahan. Lord, hindi ito ang ending. Some of us battle cancer. Some of us are fighting a difficult marriage that is about to separate. We, some of us are going through tough times in our family, in our work. Lord, matatanggal ba ako sa trabaho ng ito? Pata sarap-sarap ng ngiti mo. Ang dami mong utang. 
Ba't tawa na kayo ng tawanan sa pamilya? Hindi naman masarap ulam nyo. Bakit ang himbing-himbing ng tulog mo? Ang daming problema. Kasi meron akong Jesus. Hello? Kalabitin mo yung katabi mo. Alam mo na. Alam mo na. The book of Revelations tells us, this is not our home. This is not our real place. One day, there will be a new heaven and a new earth. You notice, he also mentions the seas will be gone. Ano? There will be no more seas, no longer any sea. Why? Because in the previous chapters, I think it was in chapter 13, the beast will arise from the sea. All evil and dark, darkness and all dragon-like serpents, they come out of the sea. There will be no more seas in this new heaven and the new earth. So it's just like a, a messaging that says, there will be no more evil, no more pain, no more cancer, no more unemployment, no more traffic in this new place, the new heaven and the new earth. And you notice it also says, I saw a city, no? the holy city descending, coming down out of heaven. I, I love that picture because it, it tells us that salvation and God's redemption is not just about leaving, escaping earth to go to heaven, to this mysterious place out there. Yes, I think that's part of the promises of God. But, but it's more beautiful when we add the reality that probably God's redemption is actually heaven coming down on earth. It's the reign and the rule of God in this, in this planet not just escaping the planet, but we work and we trust and we hope, the Lord, ah, yung simulat ito, itong barangay na ito, dumi-dumi, puro basura, puro drug addict, puro criminal. One day it will be clean. New heaven, the new earth will be better than this. So, the book of Revelations, if you notice, if you read, ang exciting ko talaga, no? It's a tale of two cities. It's the city of Babylon. You know how Babylon started? It started when when people rebelled against God and tried to build the Tower of Babel, and you know what they said? Let us, let us, let us build a city and a tower whose top will reach to heaven and let's make a name for ourselves. That's Babylon. So in contrast, the new Jerusalem is a city whose architect and builder is God. It's a city that glorifies not us, but God. And so it's a contrast to Babylon, this Jerusalem. This city is a gift from God. She is holy, she's heavenly, it comes from down from heaven. So we're not only talking about a place. Is, is Jerusalem a place? Yes. This new earth will have a new city of Jerusalem. But it's also about a people. It mentions it, it's like a bride meeting his groom. Ang ganda! So in, in the Bible, when, when the bride is mentioned, it's always talking about either Israel or the church. Haha, <laughs> it's us, believers. And there will be a marriage. Matanong ko nga kayo, are you sick and tired of this fallen, broken, unfair, corrupt, painful world? Pagod ka na ba sa mundong ito? Nainis ka na ba sa bansang ito? Nag... Gulong-gulo ka na ba sa buhay natin dito? Well, God invites us to set our hopes not on the things of this world, but to a heavenly city. Yeah? That's verses 1 and 2. This is where our true citizenship is. We belong to a higher kingdom. Nung nakarang election po, presidential election, ilan sa inyo nag-away-away? Sa church ho namin, dami nag-away, hindi nagpapansinan. Hindi na umati ng church yung iba kasi iba yung binoto niya sa binoto ng anak po. Hindi na umati ng life group, ng small group. May nag-bash ho sa akin kasi yung binoto ko ay hindi yung binoto niya. Pastor Mike, ba't hindi mo binoto si ganito? Bakit ang binoto mo ay si Tut? Sabi ko, eh, demokrasya tayo, di ba? And so I preached, I said, you know, guys, brothers, sisters, we belong to a higher kingdom. The politicians, the emperors, the presidents, and the prime ministers of this world, the governments will come and go. But our loyalty should not be to a person or a political leader, but to a kingdom and a king. 
that is more powerful and eternal and higher than all kings of this world. Amen? Palapakan nga natin ang Panginoon. Thank you, Lord. Kalabitin mo ngayon, kalabitin, kalabitin mo, makipagbati ka na kasi. Gaaway tayo. Kainis, ano, sa church din ho namin, nag-away-away. So all pastors were instructed by our senior pastor, we will be politically neutral. It will split the church. Very, very sad, no? This is the second truth in Revelations 21. In the future world, we will receive God's covenant. Ah, the covenant was echoed. The covenant, no? Will be fully, fully experienced. Verses 2 and 3 says, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and He will dwell with them. They will be His people, and God Himself will be with them and be their God. Oh God, grabe, this is all over the place. This started in Jeremiah 31, remember? When the people were exiled in Babylon, after 70 years, Jesus, God promised them, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you. You will be my people and I will be your God. That's Jeremiah 31. Amazing. You will call upon me and you will seek me and I will be found by you. You will be my people and I will be your God. It's the beginning of the new covenant. It's like a signal. Ah, I'm making all things new. Revelations is the fulfillment of that. Na dahil kay Kristo, ikaw ay naging anak ko, kayo ay naging kayan ko, at ako ang naging tatay niyo, ako ang naging Diyos na nagmamahal sa inyo. This is very important, ano? Pag may pinagdadaan ng chemotherapy, kapag may pinag may naayos kayo mag-asawa sa inyong buhay, sa inyong relasyon, pag ang anak mo may dinadaan ng gulo, parang hindi mo na kaya. Parang ang gulo-gulo, ang daming pasang-pasang patok-patong na problema sa buhay mo. You understand that Revelations invites us. You belong to God. You are the people of God. Hindi ka nag-iisa. Yakap ka ng Diyos. The loud voice explains, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with men. He will dwell with them and they will be His people and God Himself will be with them as their God. It's the language of love. It's the language of embrace. It's the language of the covenant. It's the language of Jesus Christ brought us closer to the Father and now the Father dwells with us. You know, this word, He will dwell, is the word in Exodus. God will tabernacle among His people. Ang ganda! Kayo ang tahanan ng Diyos. Kayo ang bahay ng Diyos. Kayo ang templo ng Diyos. God dwells in you. So it's not limited to just a city or a building. It's, it's the people of God. God will dwell among us. God will dwell in us. That's what the saving work of Jesus did to us. That was, that, that was what the blood of Jesus did to us. Now we are the dwelling place of God. How do we know this? Apostle Paul also mentions this. You know? How do we know that we will one day be with God? That we will belong to this heavenly, eternal life with God. He says, there's a deposit. There's an installment in you. The Holy Spirit is the deposit. May installment. Of course, we are not yet perfect. We are not glorified bodies. We are not re yet resurrected bodies. We still sin. We still fail. We're still, we're still prone to forget God and turn our backs on God. But there's a deposit in every believer. Sabi mo nga sa katabi mo, meron palang installment si Lord sa'yo eh. Installment. 100 years to pay. Kasi <laughs> joke It's the Holy Spirit living in us. It's an assurance. It's a guarantee. Oh, you belong to God. Life can be difficult and painful and full of temptations and full of trials and suffering. But you are God's property. May deposit na. Yeah, that's the Holy Spirit guaranteeing our inheritance to come. This is the third truth in Revelation 21. In the future new world, we will be embraced with God's compassion. I love this. Ito yung God will wipe all our tears away. You notice this? Verse 4 says, 
He will wipe every tear from their eyes. That's the compassion of God, no? That's the comfort of God. Tahan na, tahan na, tahan na anak. Tapos na, it's over. Tatay is here na. Ang ganda, sabi niya. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. New creation, new city, new covenant. Now this is a new compassion, a new comfort. Again, we are reminded of the promise of Isaiah. This is also found in Isaiah, no? Isaiah 25, when God exalts Mount Zion and all the enemies were defeated and he says, I will wipe every tear from your eyes. That's Isaiah 25. Isaiah also mentioned the new heaven and the new earth. No more death. Can you imagine a life with no death? Death from sickness, death from crime, death from wars, death from old age, death from the pandemic. I lost my dad, 2021, pandemic, COVID, si Papa. Hindi kami nakapagpaalam. Noong time na yun, there's no funeral, no wake allowed. You cannot say goodbye. Lalabas yung kamag-anak mo, yung mahal mo, abo na. Death. Depression. Suicide. So many death. Parang yung buong buhay natin sa mundong ito, puro kamatayan. Sanay tayo. There's an entire business, an entire career on death. Death prevention. Death preparation, death, delaying of death, and business about death. Nako, yung mayaman ng mga punerarya, yung mayaman ng mga food supplement, yung mayaman ng mga doktor. Why? Because we are preventing death. A few weeks ago, I signed, I signed a funeral plan. 20 years ago, wala namang ganyan. Anong, anong kabaong gusto mo? Gusto mo ba? Cremated? Gusto mo ba? Color pink yung kabaong mo? Gusto mo ba yung malaking chapel o konti? Ano ba? Sabi ko, grabe pala itong mga funeral plan. Ano? Amazing. Our entire lives revolve around death. Di ba? Ang daming food supplements. Hahaba ang buhay mo. Hindi ka mamamatay agad. That's in Book of Proverbs. No? The grave is never satisfied. It's death always wants more. But there's a day. Ah! A day is coming when the curse of death will be altogether removed. Death will be no more. Our assurance of that is because of Jesus Christ, He's risen from the dead. Ah, death is not the final word. Palapakan natin ang Panginoon. Thank you, Lord. God is the final word. That day, God will bring comfort to His people. That day, God will show His compassion to His people. The Lord will wipe away tears from all faces. Marami ka bang iniiyakan? What have you cried about this week? Is that a broken relationship? Is that a betrayal? Are you weeping over a health crisis in the family? A lab result that keeps you awake at night and gives you fear? What have you been crying about? Is that a financial problem that you have been going through? A difficult person that has been bullying you or hurting you? I experience a lot of mourning and, and weeping in my life as well. Ang misis ko po ay meron nung sakit na walang gamot. Doctors call this an autoimmune disease. My wife has APAS. APAS is the cousin of lupus. To some of you who are in the medical world, lupus attacks the nerves and the muscles, but APAS attacks the blood. At the age of 27, my wife has had five episodes of mild stroke. 27 years old, ho, na stroke ho ang misis ko. You see the MRI results? The, the brain is filled with scars. It's a brain stroke. So, because of APAS, every week she will experience stroke-like symptoms. Yung kamay niya, biglang umabaksak. Hawak niya ang, tinit, ang kutsara, biglang babaksak yung kutsara. Hindi niya maramdaman ang kanyang mukha. Minsan yung kanyang paa, biglang nalolow battery. Ayaw gumalaw. Nasa mall kami, wala na pala akong kausap. Nadunong pala sa kabil. Bakit? Hindi ako makalakad. Ayaw gumalaw ng paa ko. Sometimes nagluluto siya. Hindi ko na maraman. Ano ba? Umuusok na. Nakahiga na pala. Hindi siya makatayo. Those are TIA moments, no? That's what APAS does. The blood coagulates on its own. 
Nagkaklat ho yung dugo, lumalapot yung dugo nang walang kamalay-malay. Bawal ho mabuntis, ang may apas. So ikakasalo kami, we were engaged, we were about to get married in a few months, stroke happens, doctor says, may apas, ang girlfriend mo, hindi siya pwede mabuntis, hindi siya pwede maging normal na buhay niya, hindi siya pwede magtrabaho, hindi siya pwede mag-drive. So my fiancé, my girlfriend in the hospital gave me a way out. Mike, iwan mo ko, hindi ka magiging masaya. Kung iiwan mo ako, may intindihan ko. Hello? Problema ho, tinamaan ako eh. Pag nail na babo ka, wala akong pakialam, sabi ko, Lord, you give, you take away. I trust you. So, tuloy ang kasal. After ng kasal, na-stroke siya uli. Sabi ng mga doktor, bawal kay mabuntis. Pastor Mike, your wife will die if you get pregnant. Oh, di nagpigil kami. Birth control, family planning. May nakalusot. Isang madaling araw, kinakalabit ako ng misis ko, Mike, buntis ako. <laughs> Positive pregnancy test. So, usually, eh, mga married couple, we will celebrate that. No? Woohoo! Thank you, Lord! Yes! May baby na kami. Pero kami, oh, para kami mga baliw. Parang, yeah! Ah! Ano ba? Magsasaya ba tayo? Malulungkot o matatakot? She can die. The baby can die. That's apas. That's an autoimmune disease. There's no cure. So, we went to the OB gynecologist. Sinabun kami na walang banlawan. Galit na galit. Bakit kinabuntis? Ano ba? My, my wife has an uncle in the U.S. who is also ob gynecologist. Sabi, Mike, ibag, ilaglag niyo yung bata. Abort the child. Your wife will die. And so we told him, sa Pilipinas, oh, nilalaban ng mga doktor yung bata. So we will trust the Lord. We will go through this. The Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Lord, we will trust you. So the doctor says, you need injection every day. That's, if you're familiar, huh? it's a Sharon Coneta sickness. No? What, uh, 600 pesos per shot per day. Injection. For the baby to live and the wife, the mother to live. Oh, Lord, ano ba? Diyos ko, 18,000 a month. Injection pa lang. Mahal naman ang baby na to. So we went through nine months of physical struggle. We cannot hi- afford to hire a nurse to do the injection. So I did it every day. Nanginginig ho ako sa karayom eh. <laughs> Naihilo ako pag may karayom. So I will do the injection. Ah, aray ko! <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Ulitin natin. <laughs> Sakit ho. No? Sa, sa kawai inject, puro pasana eh. We went through nine months of financial struggle. We went through nine months of emotional struggle. Nagaaway kami. We went through nine months of spiritual struggle. I was, my faith is shaken. Lord, ano ba? After nine months, the baby is about to come out. Praise God. But, bawal umire. Bawal maglabor. Hindi pwede normal. May stroke siya. Bawal din mag Hindi, kasi mag bleed siya. May blood thinner yung injection. So, Dok, ano gagawin? Igagas. Sleep. Problem. If the mother sleeps, the baby sleeps. If the baby sleeps, the baby does not cry. Problema. So, normally, in Metro Manila, CS surgery will be 30-45 minutes. Nagkakape yung mga doktor, relax sila. Oh, buksa mo na. But in my, in my wife's case, they do it in five minutes or else the baby sleeps. Gas, mother sleeps, bago bumaba yung sleeping gas, kailangan buksan. Five minutes, hiwa, kuwa baby, pang Iyak! Paglabas ko ng doktor from the delivery room, yun ho, unang ko tanong, Dok, umiyak ba? Pastor Mike, umiyak, ang lakas, Ooh, thank you Lord! Yung doktor ko, my doctor is not Christian, he, our, our you know, our, our surgeon and our ob they're not religious. Napa-praise the Lord, hoy. Praise the Lord, Pastor Mike. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So my wife has an incurable disease until today. She can die anytime. By two years old, my son was diagnosed with autism.
Yes, I'm a father. I'm I'm a father of a special child. And so among special parents, special children parents, we have conversations among ourselves and we tell each other, what's worse than the death of a child? Anong mas masahol sa pagkamatay ng bata? What's worse than the death of a child is the death of a dream for the child. Mag-aasawa ba tong anak ko? Magtatrabaho ba ito? Kag-graduate ba ito, Lord? Pabubuhay ba ito pag wala na kami? So we went through therapy, and we went through gastos po ng therapy ngayon. So one night, hindi ko na kaya. My wife is sleeping, my son is sleeping. I went through the living room, I closed the lights. I went on my knees, and I was crying to God, Lord! Ang daya, daya naman. Hindi huh? ko na kaya, Lord. Ayoko na. Ang daya mo. That was, I was complaining to God. And something happens. Never happened before, never happened again. I don't want to sound you know, too mystical or too weird. But I closed my eyes, I was crying. There was this video clip in my mind. Maybe it's me, maybe it's God, I don't know. There was this video clip, like a Blu-ray DVD. During that time, ngayon wala na Blu-ray. It was a video clip of my wedding day. I don't know. So in our wedding day, there was this wedding vow. The pastor was leading the wedding vow for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, till death do us part. So that was, and I was crying. But part of the vow was we made our own vows, our memorized vows. Diba? Ginagawa, uso kayo niyo, no? So I remembered the words I said to my wife. I said, Hindi ako mayaman, wala akong pera. Wala akong bahay. Wala akong kotse. This was 20 years ago. I'm not rich. I'm not wealthy. And I said, but I have you. And I have God. We will be okay. That was my wedding vow. Grabing wedding vow naman yan, Pastor Mike. I was crying. And then, it's like, as if God was whispering to me, Mike, hawak kita, wag kang bibitaw. So after that night, my wife is still sick, my son still has autism, we're still struggling financially, baon ho sa utang, but I have peace. Everything will be okay. And that is what hope does. That there's a bigger God, bigger than our anxieties and fear and problems and troubles and our hurts. There's a good God that is far bigger and greater and wiser than whatever it is we're going through in this world. That's what the book of Revelation tells us. That God will wipe away every tear. One day, Lord, tapos na laban, panalo tayo. Thank you, Lord. Future hope allows us to endure our present pain and suffering in this life. Apostle Paul also mentions this in Corinthians, ano, our light and momentary troubles. Ang galing! Our light and momentary troubles are nothing and light and com- compared to the glory. The word for glory is doxa. It's the word for heaviness. The glory that far outweighs them all. Ang galing! The future shapes our present. And that's what separates us from the crowd. Everyone is panicking. Everyone is anxious. Everyone is afraid. Lord, katapusan na ba ng mundo? Pandemic, gera dito, gera doon. Lord, and everyone was scared. But we have peace. God will win. This is the fourth truth in Revelation 21. We will be assured that God of God's complete revelation. Ah, God will... Make everything new. The Bible says, God will make everything new. That's the first. God will make everything new. Yes. Verse 5, verse five says, He was seated on, seated on the throne. He says, I am making everything new. You know why? Because He's the one in charge. He's sitting on the throne. And then, He never lies. That's the second one. God's, word and, uh, God's words are trustworthy and true. He says, write this down for these words 
are trustworthy and true. It is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. The one who holds the future. We can trust Him. The power of God, the, that God is in charge, that He is King, is on the throne. Di ba? Ang ganda ng buhay. Kahit ang dami nating pinapasang maba, mapait, mabigat, matindi, masakit, pero may Diyos na nakaupo sa trono. Galing! Merong Alpha and Omega na alam ang bukas. We may not be sure about the future. We do not know what the future holds, but we trust the one who does hold our future. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Palapakan natin ang Panginoon. Praise God. Lord, you hold our future in your hands. You are seated on the throne. This is the last truth. In the future world, God will, we will be satisfied as God's children. Sa mundong ito, wala talagang kasiyahan. Walang kakontentuhan. There's no satisfaction and fulfillment in this world, no matter how much money, how much relationship, how much marriage, how much sexual escapade you had, how much trophies and medals and achievements and houses and properties you have. Parang merong buta sa ating buhay, hindi mapuno-puno. But one day, God will be our highest delight and highest pleasure. We will be satisfied. This is the first. Revelations 21 says, God will satisfy our thirst. Galing, ano? God will satisfy our thirst. He said, he, said to, he said to me, To the thirsty, I will give water. Come on. I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. This is, this is powerful language, no? Parang sinasabi niya, I will satisfy all the longings of your heart, all the thirsting and the cravings of your soul. Remember when Jesus was talking at the woman at the well? He says, can you give me this water from the well? And he, the, the woman says, oh, how, why are you asking me for water? I am a, you're a Jew, I'm a Samaritan. And you're a man, I'm a woman. It's not allowed. Ano ba? Ba't ka lang? And then Jesus says, you know, I have water. When you drink from this water from the well, you will, you will still be thirsty, but I will give you water. When you drink this water, you will never be thirsty again. So he was, the, the woman thought he was talking about a physical water, but Jesus was talking about eternal life. And that is the satisfaction of our thirst. Jesus says, anyone who believes in me, he will never be thirsty again. How is that possible? No cost. Bakit libre? Because you know, when Jesus was hanging on the cross, one of his last words, he says, I thirst. He was representing all of our thirsts. He was representing all our longings. Alam mo yung mga uhaw natin sa buhay. Our thirsting to belong, to be loved, to be accepted. Our thirsting to be healthy and happy in this life. Naba, meron tayong mga pagkauhaw at pagnanasa na sana may magmahal sa akin. Sana magtagumpay ako. Sana naman maging maayos yung pamilya ko. Sana naman gumaling na yung sakit ko. Sana naman maging maayos yung anak ko. Sana naman maging okay yung trabaho ko. All this longing. Sana naman maging masaya ako, Lord. Lagi akong depressed. All this longing. Jesus says, I, I thirst. It was a cosmic substitution to all our pain and our hopelessness and our desperation. So Jesus was thirsty so you can be filled. Amen? He satisfies. That's, that's the picture of Revelation 21. I will satisfy their thirst. And then he says, God will be a father to us. He will be a father to us. He says, those who are victorious will inherit all of this. What this? The city, the and all the things in the new heaven and the new earth. And I will be their God, and they will be my children. So, God will be our Father. Ako ang inyong tatay. And then finally, He says, God will deliver justice. God will deliver justice. Every crime and wickedness, sin, hurtful things we did, there's no escape. He says, the Bible says, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral. So, na-rape ka ba? Na-daya ka ba? Na-swindle ka ba? Na-nakawang ka ba? Hindi yan makakalusot. Kung nakalusot yan sa batas, nakalusot yan sa mga police. God will punish all of this. They will be consigned to the fiery lake of the burning sulfur. 
Nobody gets away with it. Ha <laughs> ha, that's justice. God will punish all the wrong and correct all the wrong. That's the end of Revelation 21. So we're talking about the new heaven and the new earth. We're talking about Revelation 21, the new heaven and the new earth. What will you do with this vision? What will you do with this reality? What will you do with this truth? Let me invite you. Whatever it is you're going through, ano man ang pinagdadaanan mo, you put your confidence in Jesus Christ. If you're a believer, you revisit that truth. Na, Panginoon, oo nga, ikaw lang ang pag-asa ko sa buhay. Ikaw lang, Panginoon, ang aking pangahawakan. You are the anchor that holds me amid the storms and the evil and the suffering and the sickness and the pain in this world. If you're not yet a believer, I invite you to put your hope in Jesus Christ. There's no other way to find hope and meaning and purpose in this world. That's how the story of the Bible ends. There's no other religion that teaches this. We have the only true explanation about suffering and pain and evil, and that is sin. And we only are the religion in this world, the only worldview in this world that offers hope that this world is not the last say, that death is not the final word, that the suffering and the injustice that we see and the corruption is not the end of the story. Something more beautiful and more powerful and, more, and better comes. A city of God. And we are all longing for that. Remember, our present reality in life, next slide please, is shaped by our future hope. Our new, a future in the new world where we will be accepted in God's city, received into God's covenant. Embraced with God's compassion, assured of God's complete restoration, and filled with God's delight as God's children. Yun ho ang ating pag-asa. Palapakan po natin ang Panginoon. Thank you, Lord. There was a time in my life when uh, meron kaming habit na pamilya. At the end of the day, my son was still little. We will watch a movie or maybe play and tickle each other. Maya-maya po, yung misis ko makakatulog na sa aking kaliwang balikat. Bigat. <laughs> and then my son will fall asleep on my other shoulder. So dalawa sila hawak ko. <laughs> Tulog na sila, gising pa ako. Bigla akong iiyak. And I will say, Lord, thank you. That in spite and despite of the suffering and the pain and the sickness that we go through, you are in charge. And I can trust you. And we have hope. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your goodness and your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Help us to have hope. Help us to hang on in whatever it is we're going through. Thank you for the vision and the prophecy and the promise of a new heaven and a new earth. That one day, Lord, you will change everything. You will transform our lives and our bodies and you will transform our world. But until that day, help us to hang on. Help us to endure. Help us to be faithful. Help us to persevere. Thank you, Lord. We love you. We honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.